This morning's scripture is found in Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, we're going to read verse 16 and then skip down to 21 and 22. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Amen. Remember that verse that Brother Jeff read last. That's going to be the basically the text verse of the morning. Um, following now, Peter, Peter said, Art thou Christ? Are you Christ? Um, Lord, um, you're the son of the living God. You're the one I've been putting my trust in. You're the one I've been following. Then he said, be it far from thee, Lord, it shall never be. It shall never be. Um, again, he said, um, if anybody betrays you, says Peter, <laughs> you can count on me. It's not going to be me. Might be Josh. Might be Brother Mike. Might be Sister Trish. But you can count on me. I'm not going to betray you. I'm going to be on your side forever. From that statement, he comes back and he says, um, he, he, he's ready to speak up to the, to the uh, people that are around him. And Peter says, um, Lord, you can count on me. But it's that but. Doesn't that, doesn't that, 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 that B-U-T get us in trouble so many times? Peter said, you can count on me, but, but the next day, one of the matrons, they call it the matrons of the, of, the, uh, of, the ar- of the army of Christ, the army of the devil, I guess it is, came up and saw Peter beneath the palace and said, uh, aren't, you, aren't you that guy who was with Jesus? Not me said Peter. Um, and what happened? The cock crew once. You know the story in the Bible. She the next day saw Peter warming by the fire. And she comes up to him and says, you are uh, you were with Jesus of Nazareth, weren't you? Peter said, uh, I know not what you speak of. Neither understand I what thou sayest. He went out from the porch, from the building, and the cock crew again. The maid saw him standing, stood by one of them and said, There he is, that Nazarene guy was with him. And Peter said, "Uh, Nazarene guy? I I don't know any Nazarene guy. Matter of fact, this time, the Bible says he began to curse and he began to swear. He was really, um, really adamant that he didn't know this person called Christ. Just a few chapters before that, he was saying, "Why? Well, I, I, you can count on me, God. I'll never leave you. Church doors open, I'm there. Don't care what else is going on. You can count on me, I'm in. I'm in. Now from one, one chapter... To the next chapter in the Bible, what happened? I want to preach on, this, on the subject this morning. Where backsliding, and Brother Jeff read it, where backsliding usually starts. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the message this morning. I thank you for the song services, for Sister Janice's beautiful song. Thank you for everything that's going on for Sunday school and the people that are here. But now it's preaching time, and I pray that we'd listen and listen closely, that we, that we give our all to the Lord Jesus Christ. If we're not saved, we'd be saved. If we're saved, we'd be drawn closer. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Just a few months ago, it's been probably two months ago, my telephone rang and I was standing beside a, a good Christian friend. I don't think anybody would know him, but I'm not going to tell you who it was anyhow. He called from one of the motels out around the Valley Mall. So I went out to meet him at his motel room. And there he stood 
at the motel. He wouldn't even let me in the door after he called me. He stood there with an estranged woman, and he said, Pastor John, if you'd have told me a year ago, I'd been standing here right now talking to you in the shape that I'm in, I'd have called you a liar. I wouldn't have believed it. How could it happen? What happened to me? What took place? Where did, where did I fail? Where did I fail? I asked the same question this morning about Peter, and we're going to answer the question as we go. Peter, I, I, I said in our Sunday school class this morning, I, I, I um, familiarize with Peter more than anybody else in the Bible, I think, because Peter could be ready to charge hell with a water pistol one minute and be backing up on Christ the next. You, we, we read about it. We talked about it. You can count on me, God. And then he hides when God needs him the most. How could he say that he was Jesus, he was serving Jesus, the son of the living God, and then the next minute deny he even knew him? Just the time the Lord needed him the most. Isn't it just the time someone needs us, needs us the most, the time when we're away from God, when we need, when we need the, the power of God? Just the time the Lord needed him, he was cursing and swearing. He was running with the devil's crowd. Somebody said, well, I know the reason he, um, he backslid because he was warming by the devil's fire. And he was. He was. And any time, listen to me, any time you take time out from God to run with the devil's crowd, you're going to act like the devil's crowd. Amen. I've said thousands of times, you're, you're going to become the type of person you hang around the most. You want to be a failure? Hang around a failure. Ask Ask Barry Bonds who he hung around the most. Last week we talked about Ty Cobb having the best batting average, but he still failed two times out of three. Ask him who he hung, who he hung around the most. They're not going to say, well, I hung around the guy that was one eye closed, trying to see with the other one, and he, couldn't, he didn't know which end of the bat to pick up. No, he's not. You want to be a success, you hang around somebody that's a success. You want to fail, they're all over the place. They're all over the place. He did hang around the devil's crowd. He did warm by the devil's fire. And, but it goes back further than that. That's not where it started. Somebody said, well, um, it was because he followed Jesus afar off. And he did. He wanted to, um, he wanted to be associated with Christ. So he kept the t-shirt on, so to speak. I belong to Jesus. He wore the hat with a C on it for Christ. But go to church. But witness to somebody? I don't even know that guy. How am I going to knock on his door and ask him if he's ready for heaven or not? But I'll sure wear the t-shirt. They asked me where I belong. I don't know how many times. One of the favorites one of, the, one of the, the, uh, the most famous lines when you talk to somebody about the crisis or about crisis, I, I, um, I belong to uh, such and such a church. Do you go? No, but I belong there. Yeah, well, that's where you belong for sure. You know, no doubt about it. He followed Jesus afar off. I'm a Christian. Never be able to tell it. Except that I sort of look like one. I don't cuss. I don't, I don't do wrong to people. I've never murdered anybody. Haven't yet, mur haven't yet um, uh, burned anybody's house down. But I'm not going to church. That's where backsliding starts sometimes, but that's not where it usually starts. It goes back further than that. Somebody said it was because... It started, you remember the story, Jesus was going to the, the Garden of Gethsemane and he tells his disciples to stay back and do what? Pray. And Peter was always the head, the head um, for lack of words, honcho. Peter, at any time you, you, see, you see two or three apostles named, it's always Peter. Peter, James, and John. Peter, Andrew, and James. It was never, it was never Andrew, James, and Peter. Peter was always the favorite. 
And um, he, uh, he asked the, uh, did Jesus, the, the, the disciples, to stay back and pray. And what did they do? They fell asleep. They fell asleep. And Jesus comes back and he finds them sleeping and he, he admonishes them. You mean I asked you to pray and you couldn't even stay asleep? Or you could, I asked you to, to pray and you couldn't stay awake? You stay asleep easy. How many, how many fall asleep praying? Raise your hand. I do all the time. I do all the time. Just about every night. Me and the dog, just, just having a good old time praying. I'm praying and the dog's snoring. I just take it that she's agreeing. But he said, you couldn't even stay awake an hour? That's all I asked you to do. I was going up to pray. And you couldn't stay awake one, one single hour? That's where it had to start. They were disobedient to God. Well, they, they definitely were disobedient to God, but that's, that's not where it started. Somebody else said, well, they boasted. They, they, uh, they boasted on how much, how close, who was the closest one to God. Well, Peter said, big guy, you want, be, you want to be careful calling God big guy, unless you're, unless you're very close to him. He said, big guy is you and me. We're on the same side. I'm, I'm like, the, I'm like the, the holster that, that you put your gun into. Whenever you go to put it in, I'm going to be there. Guaranteed. Now, them over there, I'm not sure. But you can count on me, God. Doesn't matter what anybody else does. I'm going to be there till the end. I'm going to be there till the end. Listen, you haven't, you haven't made it. You don't arrive because you give your heart to Christ. You get a ticket to heaven. That's the most important thing. But, Peter, but Paul even said, I've fought the good fight. Peter's ready, or Paul's ready to die. He says, I've, I've fought the good fight. I've sinned some. Yeah, I'm, I've been forgiven. I've kept the faith. Everybody else has given up. I believe we ought to be one. Listen, listen, young, young lady, young, young, young man. If, if you're the only one standing for Christ, you stand for Christ. If everyone else betrays him, you stand for him. If everyone else stays home, you come and get, in church, get into the church house and be obedient to God. Peter said, um, I've, I've stayed to the end. Paul said, you haven't stayed to the end. I fought the fight. I finished my course. Now I'm ready for heaven. Peter said, um, Be it far from thee, Lord. That's where it started. That's where it started. All these other things were, were, um, were um, things in the pot. But the person stir, stirring the pot was when, when Peter said, uh, Be it far from thee, Lord. You remember the story? Um, Jesus began to say, well, I'm, I'm headed toward the cross. The upper room is going to come. The last supper is going to take place. I'm going, to be, I'm going to be put on the cross. I'm going to be beaten. I'm going to be a mess. You're not going to know me anymore as far as looking at me and seeing me. And Peter said, and... Let, let's be honest, if we were there, we'd, pro- we'd probably done the same thing. You don't, you, don't, uh, you don't care for somebody and let them suffer. You don't care for someone, somebody and let them, let them be beaten, let them be abused. Peter said, uh, you can count on me, God. If they try to put you on that cross, I'm going to get you off of it. Peter said, you can count on me. They're not, you're not going to suffer. Be it far from thee. I love you too much. I don't want you to go anywhere. I don't want you to leave. If I'd have been there, I wouldn't want to wanted Christ to suffer either. I'd have hated to see him hang on the cross like that. The story's told that the servant came in and Peter drew his sword and he was going to cut the servant's head off. And the servant juked and he caught just a little bit of his ear. The ear fell on the ground. 
Jesus bent over and picked it up and stuck it back on his ear, stuck it back on his head, and the Bible says it healed. You couldn't even tell there was any blood missing. It healed that well. And um, Jesus looks at him and says, uh, Peter, what did you just do? Knowing the whole time what Peter did. And he, said, he, he, expected, he expected Jesus to say, um, you've done a good thing there, buddy. You protected me. You're out. You're, you just, you're just proving yourself. Here's your uh, whatever badge you get for getting that. Here's your badge. What did he say? He said, get thee behind me, Satan. Now, why did he say that? He said that because Jesus came to go to the cross. He didn't come to, to, to heal people. Praise God he did while he was here. He didn't come to feed the, the 1,000 or the 5,000 Sister Janice th- talked about, sung about. He didn't, come, he didn't come to raise the dead, to perform miracles all over the... He didn't, he didn't come to, to pick apostles and, and disciples and different... He came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to die on the cross. He was born at Christmas to die at Easter to go to heaven and, and be there for us today, to make places for us to go. All I'm, all I'm looking for is the vehicle to go in. And the vehicle, I believe, is, is on the way already from heaven for all of us. Man, aren't we in a mess of a shape? You turn the news on and we're just, we're just uh, being bombarded with stuff every day that you couldn't believe we're, we're, uh, we're, that, that's happening. And it's going to happen again this week and it's going to get worse. Whew. Are you ready for heaven? I hope you are because Jesus is coming back soon. I believe that with all my heart. No doubt. Um, but Peter didn't want Jesus to suffer. Jesus called him Satan because of it. And that's where the story continues from there. Um, I was thinking back this past week, uh, a couple years ago, it's been, I guess, 11 years, Jessica made a beautiful bride, just a beautiful bride. I'd known her for all, my li- for all her life. <laughs> I still couldn't talk Andy out of it. <laughs> and Sierra's going to make a beautiful bride. I know she is. As the days count down and get close. My mind goes back a few years back to a uh, phone call I'd gotten and I ended up having a funeral of a young lady that at the funeral home she broke down crying. She had her, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me, let me tell you the, the forefront. She loved this guy from, the, from kindergarten. She wrote little XEOs and XEOs and XEOs and hearts and stuff. And all, all these things for all this, all this time. She ended up marrying her sweetheart, her boyhood, her girlhood sweetheart. And at the funeral home, when I walked in, she spent two and a half days as Mrs. whatever, and her husband dropped over with a heart attack. And at the funeral home, she had her wedding dress draped across the casket. She said, Preacher, it's just not fair. It's not fair. I waited all my life. You left me marry the person that I longed to marry. And give me two and a half days? I don't understand it. Why did you take him away so fast? Why did you take him away at all? And as that picture burned into my mind, I go back and I hear Peter saying the, the, the exact same thing. God, I was with you through thick and thin. When that guy, when you were preaching that time and that guy stood up against you and he was going to pop you in the, in the snot box, I was right there with you. I was, I was ready to pounce on him for you. You could count on me, God. And I don't understand 
after all this time, after all we've gone through, you want to leave the people that love you the most and go and, 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 and be put to death by people that, that hate you the most? I don't understand it. And I'll be honest with you, I don't understand it either, except that he loves us, that he cares about us. He said, be it, be it far from thee. Don't, 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 uh, don't go. Please don't go. She said, I, don't, I, just, I just hate being here the way, I'm, the way I'm here. And I can hear Peter saying the exact same thing as he looks up and sees the cross and Jesus hanging on the cross. I just hate being here. That's where Peter's backsliding started. Because the whole thing was planned out. It was God's plan not to do anything but come to earth to hang on the cross and die for me and die for you. And Peter tried to stop it. Peter tried to change history. He didn't even, he didn't even know that was part of the plan. We think um, we think we can say, take some time off as God's people. Just, just try it and the devil will get you, I guarantee you doesn't have to be that you'd warmed by the devil's fire and run with the wrong crowd. I wouldn't chance it. It doesn't have to be that you followed Jesus afar off. I'll, I'll be there, Jesus. You can count on me. It isn't unless the ball game scheduled on Tuesday afternoon real early. Talk to a gentleman Friday on the phone. He said, you don't want me to come to church, the roof would fall in. I said, well, how about if we meet outside? He said, yeah, you know what I mean, you know what I mean. I think you'll come sometime. But he's, he's hoping that the Lord tarries. I'm only 23 or 4, he said. I think I've got a long time to go yet. I looked at the obituaries in the newspaper yesterday and a 14-year-old had passed away this past week in Washington County. Yeah, we got a long time to go yet. Are we guaranteed? No. Nope. Not at all. Not at all. It breaks my heart that Jesus had to suffer on the cross. But I praise, I praise the Lord that, that now he did. And I think he would have me be happy about it. Because now he gets to be my Savior. He couldn't have been my Savior had he not died on the cross. Now, now Jesus, my dad was a fan of, uh, of old cavalry movies. By that I mean cowboy and Indians. And he'd always, he watched them so many times Sort of like you watching the movies and dumb movies you watch. Amen. That's preaching. <laughs> he watched them so many times he could tell what was happening next. He said, one time I was, I was in the kitchen at, at his house and it was just him and I were, were there. And he said, you might want to come in here. You're going to miss a good battle here coming up next. Yeah, it's going to be a good battle. Praise God, the battle's just about over. Somebody says, well, how's the world going to end this time? How's the world going to end this time? By fire. You mean there's going to be a fire big enough to consume the whole world? That's what my Bible says. Well, how can that possibly be? What, Brother Evan, what, what could possibly create a fire big enough to destroy the whole world? Uh, could be. Yeah, I, I shouldn't have went there. Yeah. Where are my sunglasses at?
however it happens, and that could, that could well be. Most, most scholars, not overly scholars, most scholars, I know it shouldn't have went that way. It's like asking you about the, remember I asked you about the sundial? I went home and I checked it, and you were right. Most scholars believe it's going to be a nuclear thing. Now I have to think about the sun thing. I don't know about that, but I've heard different scholars think it, that, that the, the, uh, the, the nuclear age that we live in, I mean, we're only, we're only one push of a button by some nut sitting somewhere, and we're at their, we're, we're at their mercy. And believe it or not, we're more at their mercy than we've ever been these last couple months. I was watching, um, by the way, that, that quote I had at the beginning about you want to have joy for a day, you want to be happy for a day, eat a steak. That was a quote of Lou Holtz as he gave the commencement exercises at Notre Dame University. You want to be happy for a lifetime? Don't do what Peter did, but do what Peter did. You want to be happy for a lifetime? Don't live how Peter lived, but live how Peter lived. You want to, make, you want to be a good soul winner? Don't follow Peter, but you better follow Peter. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if we're, if we're honest, I can start with Josh and go to, go to Mr. Kevin and everybody in between. We all associate with Peter more than anybody else in the Bible because Peter was up here, down here. And aren't we up here and down here all the time in our lives? I hope and I'm done. I hope when Jesus comes back he catches me up here not down here. I hope when Jesus comes back he catches me praising him instead of saying something else. I hope he catches me man I'm ready to go. Instead of, oh boy, it's church day again. Now, I'll be honest, I've had them. I had, I had one of them recently. It can't be Sunday already. Tina had me at the church till 1130 at night. It can't be Sunday morning already. Then there's been days where I couldn't wait till Sunday morning came. One of these days, Jesus is going to come back not just a figment of our imagination. Jesus is going to come back. And when he comes back, no matter how much we're prepared, we're still going to be, I ain't going that way. We're still going to be shocked. If I ask Brother Evan something, he's going to say something, something more over my head again. I got a question for you though sometime. Are we, are we ready beyond being ready? Are you sure Beyond being sure that if today the day were, that Jesus would come back, you'd be ready to go. If you're not, I wouldn't take a chance. Well, I, I'm only young. Look at the newspaper, friend. Listen to the radio. Turn the TV on. I've never seen it. You've never seen it. The world in the shape it's in right now. Preacher friend said just recently, again, I've heard it said different times, that if God doesn't come back soon, he's going to owe somebody an apology. Now, I'm not going to go that far, but I guarantee you, I guarantee you, the shape, the shape the world's in is worse right now than it's ever been in since I've been alive. And I guarantee you another thing. Now, no matter who's the president, is going to turn it around and bring it back, I don't think. We need to, we need to make sure that it's King Jesus, that it's President Jesus that we're following. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that as we do associate, I'm sure that we, if we're honest, we do associate with Peter more than anybody else in the Bible because he was on fire one minute and asking why the next. But praise God, after all that, God used him to preach the most important message anybody ever preached at Pentecost. The mighty rushing wind 
the Holy Spirit of God come upon people, and Peter was right there in the midst of them. I pray that I would pattern my lives, at my life after the, the, the side of Peter that would stay close. But that I would take notice to where Peter's backsliding started and realize, geez, I've been there. I've been there. I've doubted the plan of God. That's what Peter doubted. Peter doubted that God could take care of itself. Why would you go and do that for, Jesus? It's my plan. Plan? It's not a good plan. He doubted the plan of God, which means he doubted the person of God. And God ended up calling him Satan. But he still used him. He still used him. If you're here this morning and you're not saved, be saved today. If you're here this morning and you're not as right with Christ as you can be, and you know, you don't have to be pointed out. You don't even have to raise your hand. You know if you are or not. If you're not as close to the Lord as you were last year at this time, you're backslidden, friend. You're, you're playing out backslidden. You can give any excuse you want to you, you want to use. Sister Donna put in our in our uh, on our Facebook page. If every church member were a member like me, what kind of a church would my church be? Would it be full one one Sunday and ep- absent the next? Would it be full over the winter and absent the whole summertime? Would it be full when we need something, and when we don't, we're okay and we stay away? God's given us a lot to think about. And I believe a little time to act on it. Whatever the, whatever the, the need is this morning that you have, God's, God's big enough, or if you will, God's small enough to take care of it. Father, please hear our prayers. I know each and every one of us, every single person in this auditorium has, has, has made a decision already. We've decided what we're going to do with our lives for the next week already. I pray that we'd be a mighty army trudging forth for you. We thank you for the great, these great United States of America that we live in. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of things wrong with her, but there's a lot more right about it than there is wrong about it, even with what we're going through. And I thank you that I can live in a little, little place called Pinesburg. And I didn't, I didn't go to bed one time last night and think about an airplane dropping a bomb on the house or soldiers breaking in the front door. Didn't even give it a thought. I do know a handful of people that have given their, all, their, their entire li- livelihoods to the battlefield and lost. The friend that I talked to last night with head bowed and eyes closed, that's an angel flight uh, pilot. He says it's one of the most eerie feelings that you can have on that giant, giant airplane with one single casket on it. But he said, I've never been so proud in my life. Thank you, God, for the country we live in. Thank you for still being the God of the country I live in. Be with us now as we celebrate that day, today and tomorrow, and truly all year long. For it's in your name we pray and for your sake. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are dismissed. Uh, We do have a uh, business.